So in a way, though, what we're discussing today is even, even broader than what we've touched on so far. So Shana Zuboff in her book, Surveillance Capitalism, argues that eventually the data that we all give up every day, all day, and the art artificial intelligence devices that we're increasingly buying and bringing into our homes, eventually this will take us down a path where it kind of erodes our ability to make our own decisions. It will sort of eat away at our autonomy. I would like each of you to sort of explain what she means, because I figure there's probably a lot of people in the audience who think, well, to start with, those devices, they're really convenient and good, that's why we're buying them. And if we don't do anything wrong, and if we're careful with our privacy settings, then surely it's not so bad. Can you, I mean, can you start, Chris, like, do you accept her argument? Do you think, do you accept her point? So I think that she, makes a very valid point. Um, so if you look at, uh, you know, where we're heading, you know, we, data is valuable because it's who you are. It's a representation of who you are. Um, and if, if you imagine 5, 10, 20 years down the road where we start integrating uh, AI into all of the devices and in physical environments around us, right? So all of a sudden, you know, you go into your living room and your living room is aware of your presence and thinks about you and reports information back to some company. Or it talks to the refrigerator, the refrigerator talks to the TV, the TV talks to your toothbrush, that talks to the toilet, that talks to your car, that talks to the road, that talks to your office, right? And then they all have a conversation about you, <laughs> right? And so if we think about like omnipresent surveillance, but it's not just surveillance where it goes to like a person, it's, it's, it's where we're creating not only like aware or, or about to or start a journey of creating aware spaces, but motivated spaces where, the, where your living room has an agenda, right? It's, I'm not joking. Like it's, it's, it's where you sit and so your what's, behavior. What's my living room's agenda? My living <laughs> So so to give you, you know, a tangible example that could be just a, a very mundane example, right? So, you know, imagine, um, you know, you, 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 I'll give you, okay. So if somebody, if you've got um, uh, facial recognition everywhere, you know, in future land, right? And that gets hooked up to insurance companies, it gets hooked up to security companies, risk assessment companies, right? And let's say you've got a teenager and he goes and does something stupid and he steals something, right? And then, you know, he goes through some judicial process and whatever, he goes to juvie or gets slapped on a risk, gets fined, whatever. But at that point, the physical space remembers him, right? And remembers his face and he's now profiled. And so let's say he finishes you know, his six months in juvie or whatever, uh, and he comes out and the city won't let him in anymore because the doors become the doorman, right? And if you're a grocery store and you go, oh, well, my objective AI says that this person's a higher risk of theft, so we're just not going to let him in. And all of a sudden you create like quite literally structural barriers, right? Where, you know, or how your behavior at one point in your life determines how the world sees you forever, Right? That's what profiling is. There's a, there's a fine line between trying to profile you to represent you and that representation then actually creating who you are and how the world sees you. And that's a real problem um, because that could, you know, if, if the environment constantly watches you and thinks about you on certain conditions and judgments and it makes judgments on your behavior and seeks to slowly alter it over time, where it can see you, but you can't see it and you don't know what is and isn't mediated and what you're seeing and why you're seeing it, you know, that really risks, you know, a loss of agency because you're making decisions on options that have been given to you. Mm. And I, I really worry for humanity because it, that situation, we have evolved as a species with a passive environment, right? Nature affects us, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't affect us in a motivated way, you know, unless you're very religious. It doesn't affect us in a, in a motivated way. But all of a sudden, if we create a built environment around us that is motivated and it, it can see us and we can't see it and it makes judgments and it seeks to change things and punish us or reward us, I mean, that sounds like divine. I mean, if you think about it, are, do we end up creating our own master? And if you create a city 
or a world or a country that thinks about you and knows where you are and always is making judgments about you and making choices for you, how do you escape that? And what does it mean to be a human in that kind of environment where you, where you live inside of something that's thinking? Mm. And I think that's quite profound. And, and I think that there's a lot of things that could go wrong with that. So 